first law of thermodynamics. Questions to ponder. What is the first law? What causes changes to internal energy? What is an isothermal process? What is an isobaric process? What is an isochoric process? What is an adiabatic process? And how do you calculate work in a process? The first law of thermodynamics. The first law of therm thermodynamics is really a statement of conservation of energy in a thermal system. And uh, for our example, we're going to take this thermal system where we have a, a gas trapped in the cylinder with a piston uh, pressing down. And what it's the first law of thermodynamics states is that the change in internal energy of the gas that's contained right here is uh, going to be equal to the amount of heat added to this gas plus the amount of work done on the gas by compressing the gas. So those two factors, again the heat added to the gas or the work done on the gas by compressing it, will cause a change in internal energy. To, uh, to look at these different systems and use the first law of thermodynamics, we typically use uh, or we typically use pressure volume graphs. To review pressure volume graphs, if we go back to Boyle's law and uh, understand that the pressure times the volume is equal to a constant that's provided the temperature's constant here. Um, what that says is that pressure and volume are inverses. In other words, as the volume increases, the pressure has to decrease in order to keep the uh, temperature constant here. And that would be a graph of, let's say, this line right here, this dashed line. That's our inverse variation, assuming the temperature is constant here. And so this line right here is called an isotherm, where the temperature remains the same. Again, it's called an isotherm. If we go down to this other isotherm at a lower temperature, it's lower on the graph, it has a lower temperature, this dashed line right here um, is really still a statement of this inverse relationship between pressure and volume, but at a different temperature. Um, so those are the, that is Boyle's law showing those dashed lines. But in our first law of thermodynamics, there's nothing to say that the temperature can't change. So if the temperature does change in a process, let's say that we go in a process from point A here up to point B. Now, the temperature has changed, the volume has changed, it's decreased, and the uh, pressure has increased. The temperature's increased, the volume's decreased, and the pressure has increased. In this pressure, volume graph uh, process right here from point A to point B. Um, we could have increased that pressure by doing work, pressing down the gas. We could have increased the temperature by doing work, and we could have also increased the uh, pressure and or temperature by adding heat to the system. So the total internal energy of these gas molecules could be affected by the heat and or the work done moving from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some other processes here using pre uh, pressure volume graphs and uh, using also the first law of thermodynamics. Let's see uh, how the first law can help us do work. In fact, this is why thermal systems are uh, so important. It's because they're very, very useful uh, at doing work. Because when you heat up a gas, it expands and will, can do work to lift things or to drive pistons. So if the gas uh, in a system is uh, expanding and the volume is increasing and the piston is being moved, the gases are doing work to an outside system. So instead of our internal energy increasing because the work that they're doing uh, is to the outside environment, uh, this is no longer adding work to the internal energy, it's taking energy away from the internal energy.
So we use the minus sign here when the system does, when the gas does work to the outside environment. Um, so using uh, our first law of therm thermodynamics, we have different processes that can uh, be followed here. Let's start off with a process here where the pressure stays constant from point A to point B. That's called an isobaric uh, process, again, where there's constant pressure. So if we go from point A to point B here, we can see that the volume is increasing as we go from point A to point B. And uh, so, uh, and not only is the volume increasing, but also the, uh, the temperature is increasing, in this case from like a medium temperature to a very hot temperature. Um, so the temperature is increasing. So since the work to expand the volume is uh, reducing the internal energy, we need enough heat added to our system here to not, not only do the work, but also to raise the temperature and increase the internal energy in the system. So the internal energy in the system, because of this heat added, the internal energy increases, plus we get work out of the system. Another possibility is following this path, this process from point A to point C. When we do that, um, we get work out, <coughs> um, but we also are still raising the temperature here. So uh, the input heat has to, again, increase the uh, internal energy and also do the work but it is no longer isobaric. The pressure does decrease a little bit in this process. A third process here is where, uh, which is known as the isothermal process, where we have a constant temperature. If we have a constant temperature during the process, the heat is just enough added to the system to do the work, and the internal energy remains constant or does not change and that's why the temperature doesn't change. Um, so in other words, the internal energy was equal to zero because the amount of heat added to the system was just enough to balance out the work done in lifting the piston here. So when the heat is equal to the amount of work, there's no change in internal energy, and the temperature remains constant, and it follows a path along this isotherm from point A to point D. That's an isothermal process. And in our last process here, I had to change the slide because I noticed I had two Ds. In our last process here, going from A to E, this is called an adiabatic process, it means that there's no heating. In other words, Q is equal to zero. In this particular case, the volume increased here but the increase in volume uh, resulted in doing work, but uh, resulted in a decrease in internal energy since Q is equal to zero here. Uh, so there's a decrease in internal energy and therefore the temperature drops and goes from one isotherm to another. Temperature drops here um, and in comp compensating for the increase in volume. That's called an adiabatic process where there's no heating. Again, Q is equal to zero, so the change in internal energy is equal to the work done. And since the work is negative, doing work to the outside world, the internal energy decreases in the system and the temperature decreases. Let's see how we can find work using our PV diagram in a particular system with a particular process here. Uh, if you recall from your fluids unit, uh, pressure times volume was equivalent to work. So in our system here, as this internal energy, that as a gas expands and pushes this piston up and does work to the outside world here, uh, it's doing work because the volume is increasing. So whenever the volume is increasing in our thermal systems here, we're doing negative work. And uh, that work can be calculated quite simply by taking the amount of uh, pressure times this change in volume, which happens to be the area under the PV diagram. For isobaric processes, that calculation is quite easy because uh, of the constant pressure. 
we have a constant height and the change in volume is our base and we just have a rectangle. So to find out this work here, we simply just take whatever that pressure is and multiply by this change in volume from here to here to find that area and we would have found the work uh, 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 created by pushing this piston up, piston up during this isobaric process. Staying with an isobaric process, but going in reverse now, where we're cooling the gas, we'll get a decrease in uh, volume. And uh, since it's isobaric, we'll also get a decrease in temperature here, going from one isotherm to another. And uh, so our work now would no longer be negative. Since we're compressing, our work would be positive. But we would calculate it the same way. Uh, we'll calculate the area of the curve here with this constant pressure times that change in volume. Let's look at another type of a process uh, called an isochoric process. An isochoric process is where the volume remains constant. In an isochoric process, we fix the piston here, we pin it so it can't move up or down, and then we can have heat going in or out. Let's say we, we're adding heat and increasing the uh, internal energy. That is going to cause an increase in temperature, and it will also cause an in increase in pressure going from point A to point B. And if the piston can't move, the pressure just increases as the temperature increases here. Notice that when we do that, the piston's not moving up or down, and so no work is being done. So in an isochoric process, no work is done because there's no change in volume, and the change in internal energy is simply equal to the amount of heat added to the system or taken away from the system. If we go from point B to point A by cooling the system here, then the pressure uh, decreases and uh, um, the internal energy decreases as the temperature decreases. Now let's take a look at our uh, systems that are adiabatic. In other words, there's no heat added or taken away. If a gas is expanding in an adiabatic process, then the volume is going to be increasing and work is going to be done to the outside world here. So the internal energy of the system is going to decrease and the temperature is going to decrease as we go from point A to point B. And the work is going to be equal to the area underneath this curve. This is a little more complicated calculation to find the work, so you won't be asked to do that because it requires calculus. But at least we can understand the concept here that the work would be the area under this curve. Again, that's the adiabatic process where the temperature is decreasing uh, when uh, we're expanding or doing negative work. If we go the other way and uh, we actually compress uh, very, very slowly, compress this uh, uh, piston down very, very slowly so that we don't add any heat to the system while we're compressing, then the area underneath this curve would um, tell how much we would have increased the internal energy due to that adiabatic process here without heating. So we can actually increase the internal energy by compressing this way. To get a really good feel for um, these different processes, if you search FET physics gas properties and uh, open the first thing that's in the search there, it'll take you to a simulation that allows you to play with all these variables and uh, really experience uh, in more of a visual way, uh, the, uh, in an intuitive way, all these different processes. So, hopefully we've answered all of these questions, quite a few. What is the first law of thermodynamics? What causes changes to internal energy? What is an isothermal process? What is an isobaric process? What is an isochoric process? What is an adiabatic process? And how do you calculate work in a process? And Scratch's parting thought. And hopefully you continue the process of continuous improvement.